Chapter 34 And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord shewed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all of Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher until this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died, and his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days, so the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. This is another one of the so many chapters in the Bible where if you aren't really careful, you tend to gloss over a huge amount of information and think you understand what you're reading when in fact all you know is you read the words. I'll give you a little bit of insight here. There is no mountain that we can identify as Mount Pisgah. The only mountain that's really in the area where the children of Israel would have been camped is Mount Nebo. It talks about Mount Nebo. And what we believe was referred to as Mount Pisgah is a major ridge off of Mount Nebo. And that would have been culturally quite acceptable for them to call it a mountain under its own name. They called everything by whatever name they felt like calling it anyway. Every place where they camped they gave their own names to unless it had a city or a settlement and somebody else had given it a name. So Mount Pisgah was perfectly acceptable as a name for the ridge. Now, Moses goes up there. And according, if you just read chapter 34, you would say, well, he looked out and he saw the promised land. It would never occur to you that it was absolutely impossible for him to see the promised land, all of the promised land from there. Unless he had Superman's supervision. Because, now, I don't, I believe he saw it, but I believe what he saw was in vision, was given a vision by Heavenly Father of all the promised land, and that he didn't see it through his own, just his own natural eyes. And he didn't do that because there were mountains in the way, and it was too far. For instance, he was supposed to see as far north as Dan. What you don't get in the verse, or in the chapter there, is that Dan, when it was divided off, was 125 miles north of there, and included Mount Hermon, which was a 9,000 foot high mountain. I don't know about you, but if I'm 2,500 feet up, that doesn't mean I'm going to see 125 miles clearly. I might see 20 or 30 miles, I'm really lucky. On a good clear day, I might see that far. But I don't know anybody that's got eyes good enough to see 125 miles. That's beyond the curvature of the earth. To the west, now directly to the west of there, from Mount Nebo, on a really clear day, you might see where Jerusalem is. But Moses is supposed to have seen to the uttermost sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea, which is at least another 40, 50 miles beyond that. And to the south, 
Moses is supposed to have seen to Zoar, which is a settlement beyond the end of the Dead Sea, and that's another 60, 70 miles south of Mount Nebo. So Moses would have had to have had some help from Heavenly Father to see all that. And Heavenly Father is quite capable of giving people visions, especially his prophets, when they are worthy. And Moses had done proven for 40 years he was more worthy than just about anybody else walking the face of the earth for sure. And as a reward to his prophet for all the work he had done, I believe that's what happened. So now you know the geography of, and why it was significant, that vision. So next time you read about something, understand that what isn't there, what you don't read, may affect what you do read and your understanding. And that's why I'm trying to do the commentary and cover all of this for you. Secondly, we know from the New Testament and other scriptures that Moses did not die on Mount Nebo. We know that he was translated. And translated means being taken from this life to a special situation where, without having to die, he takes on a form of eternal life. Now, that's not the ultimate eternal life, but it is a mid-state where he still has his physical body, he has not died. And the reason we know this is because in the New Testament, on the mount where Jesus and Peter, James, and John are, Elijah and Moses appear. And they do not appear as resurrected beings. They have physical bodies, but we know they aren't spirits because they come with a job that requires them to have physical bodies. And Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection. Every once in a while I get somebody to say, well, Lazarus was resurrected. No, Lazarus was made alive again. There's a difference between being made alive again and resurrected. Resurrected means resurrected unto eternal life. Moses and Elijah came, and they were the only two of the Old Testament prophets that we know of that were translated. Changed in the twinkling of an eye without having to taste death. Because they had missions to perform at the time of the before the crucifixion, before the death, and before the resurrection of the Savior, they had a mission to perform. And they needed to perform that as living, although translated human beings, otherwise they couldn't have been around long enough to do that. Just amazing things that you learn when you read the scriptures and know a little bit extra more than is right there, or you can look ahead and see what happens, and understand what happens. I'll explain all of that when we get to the New Testament, and why and how, and all the rest of that. But since we're dealing with his supposed death now, you need to know that he didn't die, and he wasn't buried by God, but that was the explanation that they gave. They had to give something. And these people were not prepared to accept the literal truth, because they were so rebellious and hard-hearted, and didn't understand. And Joshua had to give them something. So, he died and God buried him up there and we don't know where he buried, solved it. Now we got another book to go to tomorrow. <laughs>